So today we will talk about the coastal vulnerability index. So in this video we are going to discuss about the coastal vulnerability index. What is the coastal vulnerability index? What is the main aim and what are the parameters will be used in the coastal vulnerability index? So let's talk about. So as I have told you that the Indian National Center. So remember that this is the center, Indian National Center, which is the agency involved for preparing the coastal vulnerability index. Remember this point. So Indian National Center for Ocean Information Services, popularly known as IN Quiz, so has carried out a coastal vulnerability index for the entire Indian coast at the state level. So remember this point. What is the main aim? Main aim is basically to bring out an atlas comprising 156 men. What is the main aim? Main aim is to bring the atlas. Why atlas is there? Because of the news that there are the coastal vulnerabilities. Sometimes lead to the tidal effect. Sometimes lead to tsunami. Sometimes lead to floods in the coastal areas, especially in the Odisha, Bengal. Or here you can see the Karnataka, Kerala. So bring an atlas actually to provide an accurate data about the coastal vulnerability is the main aim of this coastal vulnerability index. So remember that. So further if you talk about the coastal vulnerability index then remember that this map, this map which will be means the, this atlas whether this there is a map will determine this coastal risk due to the future sea level rise. As you know what are the sea level rise day by day is going on and increasing day by day. So what is the future risk? What is the coastal risk in the future? We will decide by this map based on the physical and geological parameters for the Indian coast. So remember that. So let's talk about the parameters will be used to prepare the coastal vulnerability index. If you talk about the parameters which will be used in the coastal vulnerability index, then remember that that is the first is the tidal range. Remember that. Another is the wave height, coastal slope, coastal elevation, shoreline change rate and geomorphology and historical comparison of the sea level rise. These are the parameters which will be used in the coastal vulnerability index. You should remember this sometimes it asks. So remember that if you talk about the significance then remember that first is the significant is to provide the accurate data about the coastal vulnerability index and save the millions of people which is residing uh, at the coastal area. If you talk about the basic facts about the coastline, India's coastline, then remember that it is around the 7,516.6 km is the total Indian coastline. There are the 6,000 some points around the main and some are the also 1,000, some are the other coastline. But the total coastline, Indian coastline, if you talk about 7,506. And remember that actually coastline of India is consist of V-shape. So if you talk about these are the kind of Indian or this is the side of Indian map which covers the coastline of India. So remember that here is somewhere the Lakshadweep and here is the somewhere the Andaman and Nicobar. Otherwise from the Gujarat here to West Bengal somewhere here. So this is the V-shape which consists of the Indian coastline. So remember that. You can remember from the V-shape. So this is very very important. If you talk about the coastal states and union territories then remember that Gujarat and what is the main features of the Gujarat? Gujarat is the largest coastline. If you talk about the states. So remember that states. A further Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha and West Bengal is the India's coastline state. So remember that. If you talk about the Union territories then remember that the Lakshadweep, Andaman and Nicobar. Andaman and Nicobar is the largest Union territory. The Indian coastline is the largest Union territory. So remember that. If you talk about in Andaman and Nicobar sometimes question can be asked by mix. Then remember that Gujarat is the highest coastline. So remember that. Not Andaman and Nicobar. So remember that. If you talk about another is the Daman and Diu. If you talk about another is the Puducherry. These are the union territories and the state which belongs to the Indian coastline around in the V-shape. So remember that. So this is very very important. If you talk about it also consists of 4120 square kilometer of mangrove area which is very very important. Recent event in West Bengal actually how is the coastal vulnerability index affected the mangrove forest so very very important it also saved the not only the millions of people but also the mangrove forest and obviously there are the area some national parks some sanctuaries are also there is very very important so this is the main significance of coastal vulnerability index if you talk about the indian national center for ocean information services then remember that it is a autonomous organization under the ministry of earth sciences remember this this is an autonomous organization under the ministry of earth sciences this is the ministry of earth sciences so remember that if you talk about it is established in 1999 and located in hyderabad 
एंड इफ यू टॉक अबाउट अर्थ सिस्टम सर्विस साइंस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन अर्थ सिस्टम साइंस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज एन एग्जीक्यूटिव आर्म ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ आर साइंसेस फॉर इट्स पॉलिसी एंड प्रोग्राम व्हाट इज द मेन मैंडेट मेन बॉय मैंडेट ऑब्वियसली इट इज द प्रोवाइड द बेस्ट पॉसिबल इंफॉर्मेशन सर्विसेज ऑब्वियसली ओशन सर्विसेज एंड एडवाइजरी सर्विसेज व्हेनेवर रिक्वायर्ड बाय द गवर्नमेंट और एनी इंडस्ट्री सो रिमेंबर दैट सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट व्हाट इज द मेन समरी रिमेंबर दैट this is the incois is actually provided the coastal vulnerability index on the basis of various parameters what is the main aim main aim is to bring out an atlas to basically to look at the what is the future sea level rise and what are the coastal risk involved due to that sea level rise that is the main aim of the coastal vulnerability index if you talk about re, further remember that there are the around the nine state and the four union territories which are the indian coast line and around the same so remember that gujarat is the largest coast line in state and andaman and nicobar is the largest coast line in union territories if you talk about in the gujarat and andaman and nicobar then gujarat has the highest coast line so thank you guys hope you like this video